all right YouTube and Fallout community. So in today's video, I want to talk about all the recurring characters in Fallout 4 who came from Fallout 3. I actually don't know if there's any from Fallout New Vegas, but that pr pretty much pretends like the Mojave doesn't exist. Now you may already know all these characters, maybe you only know some of them. Either way, let's get into this shit. Having recurring characters from Fallout 3 in Fallout 4 is one of those minor things that nobody ever really talks about. Like, this is a big thing in, in a lot of ways because we kind of get some after story for Fallout 3. It's kind of nice to know, you know, when you've played an older game for a long time, it's kind of nice when they come out with a sequel finally and you get to learn about what ha what's happened since. And that kind of, this is kind of what that is. We don't get to learn about the main character. We don't know what happened to the Lone Wanderer really after Fallout 3, but this is still something. It's kind of nice. First up is Arthur Maxson from Fallout 3. He was kind of a nobody character, ugly as hell, as you can tell by the picture. There wasn't a whole lot going with him, he was just a kid. There wasn't a whole lot going with the kids at all in Fallout 3. You could go in his room, you could hack his terminal, learn a little bit about him. But for the most part, he was kind of a nobody. Fast forward to Fallout 4, and he's a young leader of the East Coast Brotherhood of Steel. He's only a, a 20 years old, he definitely doesn't look that young. But it's kind of cool, man. This is one that had to be pointed out to me because he was such a minor character in Fallout 3. I didn't even know that he was a recurring character at all. I didn't know the game had recurring characters at the point that I met him in the game. And it's just kind of cool, man, to see him go from a nothing character to now a leader of one of the you know branches of Brotherhood of Steel. Next up is Dr. Madison Lee. Now, you probably remember her from Fallout 3, of course. She was part of a big part of the main story. She points you, you go to Rivet City to meet with her and get directions towards where your father might be. And then, of course, she helps you complete pretty much the main, the entirety of the main story. And in Fallout 4, you run into her in the Institute. She's already a member. She's one of the scientists there. And the Brotherhood wants you to recruit her back to the Brotherhood because she's previously worked on Liberty Prime. And they're trying to bring Liberty Prime back to life. Now, you don't have to. You could either go against the Brotherhood or go against the Institute. You can choose what you want to do. This one I noticed right away. I knew exactly. As soon as I seen her and it said Dr. Lee, I was like, that is Dr. Lee from Fallout 3. And I thought that was pretty cool. Next up, we have Mayor McCready from Fallout 3. He was a little asshole. He was a douchebag, little shit-ass character. That made, he's one of the characters that makes you wish you could kill the kids in Fallout, but alas, you could not. But he does actually end up helping you because you have to go through Little Lamplight to get to Vault 87, I believe it was, to get the Gek or whatever. So he was useful in the main story of Fallout 3, but he's still a douchebag. In Fallout 4, you run into Robert Joseph McCready in the Third Rail Bar in Good Neighbor, and he is, since since the events of Fallout 4, he is, he's grown up, he's had a wife and a kid, the wife has died, and the kid is, his kid Duncan has contracted some disease he does not know what it is, so he, what his story is, is he traveled to the Commonwealth looking for a cure, and that's where you meet him and you kind of learn about him, and it's just kind of cool, like, you take a little, he's kind of a major character, sort of, from Fallout 3, and now he's, he can be a companion, I thought that was really fucking awesome, and his story's kind of dark and interesting. Next, we're going to hit a couple of honorable mentions. One of them we've already mentioned previously with Dr. Lee, and the other ones are kind of honorable mentions, kind of aren't. Either way, let's get into it. First up is Liberty Prime. Now, he was a major part of Fallout 3. He's pretty much the deciding factor to, in the fight against the Enclave. Without him, the Brotherhood probably wouldn't have even come close to succeeding. And we all remember that first time he got raised out of the Citadel, and they put him on the damn, uh, out on the street, and he just starts chunking mini nukes and destroying everything. It was, just, it was a really, really fun time. One of the most memorable quest moments in Fallout 3. In Fallout 4, Elder Maxon's Brotherhood is trying to rebuild Liberty Prime for the fight against the Institute, and it's a really fun storyline if you decide with the Brotherhood to be able to get all the parts, if you actually feel like you're a part of it now, because you actually get all the parts to rebuild him, all the components that he needs, all the mini nukes he needs to be able to throw, and you get to go and like they, you go to the Institute and you get to destroy, open a hole in the ground to the Institute. It was so damn fun, man. It was really action-packed. Next up for the honorable mentions is the Mechanist. Now, the Mechanist in Fallout 3 wasn't that important. He was just part of a side quest you could get in Canterbury Commons called the Superhuman Gambit, where he's a superhero, or at least he thinks he is, and he's fighting alongside the antagonizer who is the villain in the scenario. And you gotta try to stop them both because they're causing damage to the town of Canterbury Commons. Now, the Mechanist in Fallout 4 has a more important role. She's the main villain, main bad guy of the Automatron DLC. Now, she got the idea by the radio show and the comic books of the Mechanist. She thought she'd put on the costume, take on the persona of the Mechanist, and try to use the robots to help the Commonwealth. But, because of an error in the programming by the Robobrains, the, mecha the Mechanist robots just start attacking everybody. And that's kind of what starts the Automatron DLC questline. Really fun. It was kind of a big shock. I was hoping for it to be the same guy from Fallout 3, but alas, it was not. Last up for the honorable mentions is just dog meat. He's in pretty much every Fallout game for the most part. He wasn't actually in New Vegas, which I find weird. They did have a dog companion, but it was Rex. I don't know why it had to be named Rex. It, you could have just had the robotic dog give him the name dog meat, and it would just kind of kept that continuity between all the Fallout games. Either way, just a small one, but we had to mention it.
And last up for our recurring characters in Fallout 4 from Fallout 3 is Drum Roll Please. It's just Sierra Petrovita. She wasn't anything amazing for the last of it. But she was kind of a minor character. You probably remember the quest where you gotta get her 30 different or 30 Nuka Cola Quantums, and then she'll give you the schematic for the Nuka Grenade, which was a really fucking fun weapon. Probably my favorite weapon in Fallout 3. It was such a strong, powerful explosive. Her appearance in Fallout 4 was actually kind of surprising to me, even though it shouldn't have been. We had an, a DLC centered around Nuka Cola, so it should have been pretty obvious that she would be there, but it was just kind of shocking. When I walked up on her and I seen that her name was Sierra, I was like, wait a second, I'm pretty sure I recognize her. And then when she started talking and everything, you just kind of put two and two together, and it was... I, it was the most surprising one for me because I wasn't expecting it and I don't know why. In Fallout 4, she gives you another quest. She wants you to find all the hidden cappies around Nuka World. She gives you these special glasses that show you the hidden cappy images and the letters that are with each image. Because you need the letters for the password to get into, I believe, the creator of the Nuka Cola's house. Or somewhere where he lived, whatever the case. I won't spoil the quest for you because it's a pretty cool quest line. Either way, it was very, it was kind of fun to see her again. I don't know. And that is my video of the recurring characters in Fallout 4 from Fallout 3. Now, it's very possible I've missed some. There might be some minor characters that are from Fallout 3 that made some sort of minor appearance in Fallout 4. If that is the case and you know about them, definitely leave them in the comments below. Because I'd be, I'm curious if there are more. I'd like, to, I'd hope there's a lot more, but I don't know. These are the only ones that I know of. Anyways, guys, hopefully this video was informative for you. If you went on to enjoy the video, guys, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Follow me on Twitter. Links to my social networks are in the description and in the outro. Later. Till it comes to conclusions, all the things that we thought we were losing. I'm a ghost and you know this. That's why we broke up in the first place. Cause I want you to know that